I'm going out, all right? Well, if you must know, I'm going to the orchestra. Yes, well, you've made that much very clear. Though I'm still not quite sure what your problem is. Oh, really? All right, come on. Let's hear it. What's your point? I didn't see you moving and shouting when I took you to that new Pixar movie the other day. Is it lame to you that it's frowned upon to make lots of noise in a cinema? Well, maybe classical music isn't so different. Maybe it is like a movie. What does a movie try to do? Go on, what does a movie try to do? That's right. And it does it through getting you invested over time with themes and characters, little details. Well, orchestral music is doing something quite similar, you know. Maybe the idea is to listen out for themes and characters, recall things you've heard, follow it through the big and the small, that kind of thing. Well, maybe music has something more to offer you then. Ugh, you still get to clap at the end. What's your problem? Ah, you mean not clapping between movements. What happened? How did that make you feel? Well, undoubtedly there is a sense of snobbishness at play here sometimes, which I don't much like. But there is some reason for the clapping at some parts and not others. You betcha. So, in a lot of art music you have pieces which are made up of separate parts, called movements. Um, well, think of them like tracks of an album. Uh, maybe Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. You know, a concept album. Some album where all the tracks have some connection to an overarching theme. So, if you're listening to a, a symphony like Beethoven's Fifth, which has four movements, it's like you're listening to an album with four tracks on it. And let's say the artist intends for you to listen to the whole thing in one fell swoop. Well, let's say you go and see one of your favourite bands before. And let's say it's a concept album they're performing. Before they begin, the singer steps forward and says something like, We wrote this album to reflect the theme of longing for home, and all these tracks are really personal to each of us. So it'd be awesome if you could hold your applause till the very end and experience it like the journey that we intended it to be. Now, what would you think if that happened? You'd respect it, wouldn't you? You'd think, I'm up for a journey. I'll hold my applause till the end. All right. There are actually many examples of what we might call one-off pieces. Ones that just have a single continuous movement. But there are indeed many pieces that are like albums with separate tracks, intended to be listened to in one continuous journey that you wait till the end to clap for. And that's the reason behind the whole don't clap yet thing. you even clap anyway? Oh. Yeah. 
What now? So what? Congratulations! And what about when you went to the orchestra? Ooh. There are some shows which try to address this, but on the whole, you're right. These shows aren't the same to look at. These days, if I go to a classical concert, do you know what I do? I often close my eyes. No, I close my eyes because this music is full of information. It's full of its own colours and images. And I find that when my eyes are closed, I notice that stuff better. At a rock concert, what you see on stage generally matches what you hear. That's part of the magic of it. Art music has a lot more colour within itself. There are more instruments after all, and those instruments generally have more freedom. And by closing your eyes, you can open yourself up to this internal action. You like reading, don't you? Great stuff. When you read your Harry Potter books, you have no problem at all seeing and hearing through your own imagination, even though all you're really seeing are words on a page. The stories come to life within your own head, with more vibrancy to them than can ever have been achieved on a film. I'm saying it could be a lot like reading. There may not be a lot to look at on stage, but you can let this music fill your head with another world. Yes, I do. I'd try what you might call mindful listening. Like I said, just close your eyes and notice the sounds you're hearing. How are they acting? How are they interacting? I find if I listen in this way, I accept the sounds for what they are. Let them tell the story, rather than just expecting something else the whole time. It helps, uh, it helps immerse me in the experience. Now, can I please go? Cat Chichurian. Uh, the spelling is a bit different, but you're right. Cat Chichurian. And it just so happens that I have two tickets. It would be my pleasure. You know, Benson, I think this is the beginning of a, a beautiful friendship. Thank you.